Okay, just to clarify, because this would be seen around the world, I'm assuming, I'm Shah Rukh Khan. <laughs> India, and I'm, I think in most of the culture that we follow, I'd like to say it in Hindi, uh, we believe that there is a heaven under the mother's feet. For me, I've always said this, it's an old thing I always felt. To me, I wear stardom like a t-shirt, not like a tuxedo. It's not important. I went to meet a director who called me, a very famous director. I won't take his name now. I mean, he wouldn't mind, I know, but I wouldn't take his name. And he said, you know, the most attractive part of you is that you're very ugly. During uh, COVID, uh, my hair grew. There was nobody to cut them. And I was working out a lot. And one day, I saw myself in all my glory in the mirror. And I looked at my body and I'm at my head and I said, I'm Tarzan. I have to do an action film. <laughs> to be here, I never expected it's nice and cool also. I thank everyone here in Locarno at the 77th edition, especially Jonah and uh, Maya Hoffman and uh, everybody who's been involved with this. Uh, thank you for having me over here. It's been a wonderful three days and so lovely to see all of you. You know how much it means to us. And uh, as you know, this is a Q&A session. And uh, for those that don't know you, they're not in this room. <laughs> for those who don't know me, please leave. <laughs> Google me and then come back. <laughs> so I would love to begin with a very easy question. And uh, I would love I would love to know, when did you first become aware that you were in love with cinema? And how did that happen? Okay, just to clarify, because this would be seen around the world, I'm assuming, I'm Shah Rukh Khan. <laughs> I work in Indian films, and most of the films I've done are in Hindi. And I've been working in the film industry for the last 32 to 33 years. I've done a bit of television. I've done a lot of cinema. I think my filmography is about 68 full-length films, and another 2013, which I've done guest appearances. Guest appearances in Hindi films mean you come and work for free. <laughs> well, that's what I've done. And yes, uh, I was very young. I don't think I ever thought I'd be actor, actor, to be honest. Uh, I was one of those uh, kids who wanted to participate in everything that happened in school. So whether it was the 100 meter dash, whether it was drama or little plays or you know what have you in school, um, sticking pictures on little chart papers and having an exhibition or making uh, a small light light up in a science uh, exhibition. And uh, watching a film was a big deal. Uh, I'm talking uh, somewhere in 80s. Uh, early 80s or mid 80s and uh, to go to a theater was a big deal and uh, my mother she was a big movie fan we had what is known as a video cassette recorder to all the youngsters they used to be uh, an instrument <laughs> where you could tape and played and tape used to get stuck <laughs> it wasn't like a hard disk that you have and it was a big thing to own one and uh, we were very poor but i think my mother's sister was very rich so she gifted us one. So it was in her room and in India, and I'm, I think in most of the culture that we follow, I like to say it in Hindi, uh, we believe that there is a heaven under the mother's feet. Ma ke kadmo ke niche And uh, uh, that's what my mother told me every time and said, press my feet. <laughs> so, so at night I would press her feet and when I would do that to put her to sleep, the television and movies used to go on and you know, if you were not, if, if you didn't, uh, you used to get older movies for one rupee or two rupees, the newer ones for 10 rupees. Mm -hmm. So you just watched movies after movies. So I started liking films then. And at one time, there's an uh, exam in Hindi, in the local language, normally kids are poor. I was in an Irish brother school, uh, very Christian, very strict, very English speaking. So Hindi was not my strongest point. And then my mom said, I'll take you to a movie hall to watch a film if you get 10 on 10 in Hindi dictation. Uh, 
I've never said this, but I'll commit. I think one answer I copied from a friend, <laughs> but I did get 10 on 10. And then my mother took me to watch a film in a theater, first time. And strangely and coincidentally, it's a film called Joshile, which was of the director, with whom I did maximum number for my films later on in my life. So life is connected, Mr. Yash Chopra. It was his film, Joshile. Strangely, I'm sitting here in Locarno, Switzerland, because of him, because of that movie I saw. And uh, you know, then my parents died, and I, um, I wanted to just leave the city, do something. I was doing my masters in mass communication and filmmaking. I wanted to be a film director. Uh, I came to Mumbai. I thought I'll get some roles. Then I thought I'll work in front of, and, and television came into India, so I got little bits and pieces roles. Um, and then one thing led to the other. I came to Mumbai for a year in 1990 and I said I'll work for a year earn one lakh rupee buy myself a house and then go back and become a scientist or a mass communication journalist um, I haven't gone back yet so, <laughs> <laughs> wish you, ne you never will so but you weren't always the hero so you started you also played villains so how did this switch happened what clicked inside of you so when I came to Mumbai I I, I was quite I, th I thought I was very old I was I think 25 26 I started late compared to what people start in films now um, I started at the age of 26 and most of the films being made that time were about college love stories so I found it strange to be sitting on a desk in a chair and behaving I'm in college I found it awkward uh, but I didn't find it awkward enough that when I became 32, I did the same thing in Kuch Kuch Hai. So, so I went to meet a director who called me, a very famous director. I won't take his name now. I mean, he wouldn't mind, I know, but I wouldn't take his name. And he said, you know, the most attractive part of you is that you're very ugly. You know, because all these heroes, uh, they, 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 they look really Swiss chocolate-like. <laughs> I didn't look like Swiss chocolate. So I said, okay, if I'm ugly, I'll do bad guy roles. So I did bad guy roles. And one of the bad films, bad guy roles I did uh, was in Switzerland. It was a film called Dar. Yeah. Yeah. So just for everyone who's seen it, I love you. <laughs> And I think being in Switzerland and uh, drinking your milk, I became a <laughs> chocolate <laughs> Because as soon as, while I was finishing that, I remember Mr. Yash Chopra telling me that I want to cast you in a love story. Uh, you don't look such a bad guy. Um, he made uh, DDLJ with me. Uh, Yeah, so then one thing led to the other, then I became the good guy. And now I'm the good guy sometimes, the bad guy sometimes, or a mix of both the guys sometimes. Biggest superstar in the world! Yeah! I hope this is not a too technical question, but I would really love to know how does a film project in which you start come to life? Do you start with an idea of a script, uh, a basic outline, what you want to do, or is it the desire to be directed by someone very specific, or a lead actress, or an antagonist, a villain you want to play with, and how does one idea lead to the other, and how does the project come together? Um, so, so Jana, it's uh, actually very simple. It's not as complicated. Uh, when you were narrating all that, I got scared. I do so many things. <laughs> it's very simple. Um, and I'm not actually wanting to do a lot of films. Uh, I realize that I take a long time to do a film. Many a times I'll see on social media people even blaming me. Oh, come on, do a film now. It's too long and everything. But I, I take a long time because I want to spend a lot of time with the person who's going to direct me. Why? Because you spend a year of your life with them. I really want to have fun. And when I say fun, it's not dancing and drinking. It's just talking about films, getting to know each other. So when we are on sets, we have a good time. Uh, because I think 
the love that you have on sets making a film permeates through the screen and goes to the people. So I really want to enjoy that process. I do one film, two film in a year. Um, so I spend a lot of time. That's why sometimes I'm even blamed for working with friends again and again. But I've already worked with them. I'm comfortable. So I, you know, and I'm sitting. I finished uh, Jawan last year and Dunkey. <laughs> Now there's a certain kind of film I want to do, uh, you know, where maybe it's more age-centric and I want to try something. For six, seven years I've been thinking about it and uh, I mentioned it to um, Sujoy one day. He was sitting, he works with us in our office, he's made some films for us and he says, sir, I have a subject. So it's as simple as that, that I have a desire to do a genre, uh, a comedy or a social film or a drama or a courtroom and I just put it out in the air. I meet a couple of people, some of them have a subject, I hear it, I spend time with them and then we just go ahead and make the film and have lots of fun. So it's never been more uh, straightforward than that. Like for example, when I was, uh, when COVID, uh, during uh, COVID, uh, my hair grew, there was nobody to cut them. <laughs> I was working out a lot. And one day, I saw myself in all my glory in the mirror. <laughs> and I looked at my body and I, my head and I said, I'm Tarzan. <laughs> I have to do an action film. <laughs> and it was so strange. Uh, Adi, who's made DDLJ with me, called one day and COVID was just kind of dissipating. People could meet each other in that two hours, three hours. And he dropped in and he said, you know, I have a film. And I said, yeah. And he said, a guy is beating you and you've got long hair. <laughs> I said, yeah. And then uh, he says, uh, you, who are you? And he says, I'm so and so. And you say, Zinda. <laughs> He didn't say it so nicely. He said, Zinda. <laughs> when he said that, uh, I told my team, I told Pooja, I said, we're doing this, we have long hair, we have the body, we'll just get up. So the film was signed only on one word. I know Siddharth for a long time, he's a friend. And I said, this is, this is the film I'm doing, I'm cut out for it. So it's as simple as that. Long hair, and that's it. <laughs> well, you know, in my case, long hair, mm, I've already done you in Jalan actually, in the bald version. <laughs> Two of your most beloved films, Om Shanti Om and mine, were directed by Farah Khan. So, what is the main difference, according to your point of view, to working with a female director or a male director? What does it make it different, if at all? Uh, I. There, there is, there is 100% some kind of a difference, not like a major difference to it being the decision-making uh, reason or a deal-breaking reason. Uh, I do find having worked a lot with women as actresses, as producers, as directors, um, I do find them a little more sensitive, a little more nuanced. Um, men, um, guys, this is not negative for you, <laughs> because I'm sure your girlfriends and your wives are saying this to you every day. Men compartmentalize their feelings. Oh, you don't understand. Uh, I want to not fight about just this thing. I want to fight about everything that has happened over the years. So men can compartmentalize and say, but we were fighting about this. Why has this come into it? But women are more nuanced and uh, overarching. You know, they go all over the place. So I think uh, I enjoy working with women uh, because of the sensitivity. Uh, of, of also, to be honest, uh, I, I don't want to belittle the importance of some of great directors who are also um, very nice optically, like Mr. Sanjay Dila Bansali or Karan Johar. They're very beautiful when they put on screens, Mali Ratnam. But women also uh, make the films look nicer. I don't know whether it's the colors. Again, not to take away from all the great male directors I work with, and I don't want to sound inappropriate. Anybody on social media finds this inappropriate. Please don't. They do smell better, <laughs> which which you'll understand, as I he's, uh, he's a he's a smell fiend. He just wants to have good perfume and smell. And that. So you'll understand. They smell nicer. They have shampoo in hair, it's just nicer the atmosphere, they laugh more. And Farah especially, to be honest, used to feed us very well. And she's got a great sense of humor. So it's great fun having done Om Shanti Om and Mehuna and even Happy New Year. She's a fun, fun person to work with, but there is a little difference. Having said that, um, I, I, I am more in touch with my feminine side, I feel. See the way you and I are sitting? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think, yeah. <laughs>
So we are more in touch with my feminine side. So I'm not too much into machismo and you know guns and fighting. As I like to hear girls talk, and I enjoy more with the girls. Oh, yeah. I mean. There is a very small part of your fans here, and a lot of them watching us online. But you've made in fan a very interesting film about how you can worship an image or what you think what an actor is, and you played both parts. And uh, it's a very complex film, and also very dark. And for uh, someone like you, how difficult was it to tap into these darker zones of what it is that makes the public image of Shah Rukh Khan? So I'll answer it in three parts. First, there are certain films, uh, I know I'm known to do films which bring joy to a lot of people. I want films to be hopeful, I want films to be happy. I think storytelling should lead to something which uh, touches people's lives in different facets. And improve is too uh, hard a word to say, but touches people's life and makes it feel better. You know, when people come, sit in a dark room, watch a movie, it should invoke a feeling of positivity. Uh, but then, you know, as an actor, sometimes I want to try something which has not been done before to push the boundaries that I can do as an actor and then come back to doing the good stuff, the positive stuff. So Fan was a very personal journey, very scary journey. Uh, you know, to take both sides. Um, I don't think the adulation and love that I get from people would become as strong and intense as the character played. Um, also, what was difficult was to play an insecure superstar and let it come to life. You know, normally when you play a superstar in a film, it's all uh, glory and bigness and people jumping and screaming your name. But I wanted this guy to be scared of his star, which is very difficult to do it because uh, it's like exposing a part of every star there is in the world. That, you know, there can be this insecurity. And, um, you know, so it was like looking in a mirror and identifying with the image and the person itself. And going ahead and playing it. So it was very schizophrenic, very strange, very awkward. And to be very honest with Manish Sharma, who was the director, I actually started feeling <coughs> like two people. Uh, so it was a very personal journey for him. And for me to bring this out, that's why perhaps it's so dark. And I do believe films which become too personal, become too complicated, uh, and storytelling should be simple, straightforward, honest, from the heart. So I think fan became too complicated. That's why not too many people enjoyed it. And it's scary as hell you know, to find someone like that coming to your house, breaking things, and you know, doing what he was doing, and still madly in love with you. You know, to meet someone who could go there and still be loving you so much with so much purity. So the question was, is that love that you go to extremes to, uh, you know, get it, even if it's negative? Or is love what we normally talk about, you know, all flowers and roses and <laughs> singing and dancing and memories? So it was a strange journey, very difficult to do. Uh, I felt very bad it didn't do well, uh, because this prosthetic, the, those prosthetics were really difficult. Three hours, four hours I used to wear that. Joe. And an aside, I should tell you, it was done by a gentleman, very well known uh, a prosthetic artist called Greg from Hollywood. And uh, when we were trying out different looks, we did some strange things, and I looked uglier than I am. <laughs> then finally, they said, Okay, we found this jaw, and uh, he had done Benjamin Button. So the jaw is actually Mr. Brad Pitt's. <laughs> so he got that jaw and put it onto my face, and that's how we fixed that. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll tell Mr. Brad, producer. I love you, Should we just send Jonah away? <laughs> and don't do interviews, just um, exchange sweet nothings of love. <laughs> so, having spoken about this relationship with your fan base and fan, when did it actually dawn on you that your status was becoming something different than just a very well-known actor, 
a very beloved one? When did you actually understand that something was going on, something that wasn't there before? And how did you adapt to that, to this change? I'm asking this because I was just wondering if it happened at all or if it... Uh, no, John, I come from a background where, for me, being able to entertain people when they come in touch with me every moment is the most extreme important thing. There is nothing more important. So, if I'm here, and these uh, people have come from all over uh, to sit down and watch an interview, I want them to take away something uh, which is entertaining. Uh, it could be a sad entertainment, it could be good entertainment, it can be romantic entertainment. Uh, and for me, uh, I've always never understood the stardom part of it. So I come and I try and give joy. I fall, I somersault, I run, I fight, I sing, I romance, I become a bad guy. And then I give, try to give joy in whichever way. I, I'm, I'm, I'm like a monkey. I want to do anything that will give you joy. And then when people get joy, they like me back. And that liking becomes to adulation and, and adore me and love me. And say, okay, this is nice. He gives us joy. We have a life. All of them have a life. I have this life where I'm doing a job also. And they take time out from their jobs, from their life, sit down for two hours, get happiness, and respond back to it by saying, we love you. Stardom is just a circumstantial, consequential byproduct of this. It has nothing to do with me and them. That just is because you have to, like I said, compartmentalize everything. So that's a different person. That's a different thing. It has nothing to do with what I do and what they do. So I've never thought of stardom as anything important. Yes, I respect it a lot. It has given me a lot of recognition, love, monies. My family feels happy because of it. But beyond that, stardom is not something that I carry as the first thing when I walk into a room. For me, I've always said this. It's an old thing I always felt. To me, I wear stardom like a t-shirt, not like a tuxedo. It's not important. And it's there, I'm careless about it, and it's very nice, and I hope it remains. If it's not there, will this love change? I don't think so. So stardom... But yes, I do know that, you know, sometimes I meet people and I've done a film 10 years ago and they say, you know, we got married and I saw this guy and I married him because uh, after seeing so-and-so film, it didn't turn out well. <laughs> Nothing to do with the film, I still had a good time. And some people, I, I, I read a book just now by some lady which said, you know, young girls started wanting to do something because they were inspired by the story of this guy who comes from nowhere and achieves something in life. So those things uh, make me realize it's an important thing. I need to respect it, love it. I need to uh, uh, not understand it, own it, or believe this is what I am. I think the day I stop being able to give joy, star won't matter even if I'm a bigger star. Uh, what would matter is that people are not taking back home something that I wanted to give them. So I, I don't know how I equate to it. I, 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 don't, I try not to be a star. Um, I try to be just myself as I am uh, on screen and off screen and it works uh, better for me. This answer is why we love you. As you know, here in the, the Western world in Europe, we think of Bollywood as just one thing, but there are many nuances and differences and for instance uh, Javan uh, is a film that you made with Atli who is a Tamil speaking <laughs> director and a couple of years ago we had the Tamil film in the international competition so I would love to help us understand how do you uh, not relate to us what it means all this uh, specific regional languages and identities and how they come all together in creating something so unique like a film like Jawan where once again you play two roles, at least two. <laughs> I, actually, uh, if you ask me honestly for years, uh, for me, uh, to regionalize Indian cinema is wrong, to be honest. It's just that our country is so vast that we don't have different dialects across the nation, we have different languages across the nation. So there is Tamil, there is Telugu, there is Hindi, there is Gujarati, there is Marathi, there is Bengali, there is Uriya, there's so many languages. Um, 
so it's somehow uh, I think it's all Indian cinema um, having said that to me one of the greatest storytelling parts of India if I could say it like this is the South Indian part they have <laughs> Malayalam cinema, Tamil cinema, uh, they have some of the greatest superstars uh, of our country and, and we all know it in India, it's not that, it's just that recently with some huge hits including Javan and RRR and Bahubali, everybody started noticing it all over, but cinematically and uh, technically South cinema is really really fantastic, uh, it was a desire after having worked with Mr. Mani Ratnam in a film Dilse, that I should work in South Yes, <laughs> in, a, in a South uh, genre film, not just get a South Indian director to make a film. They have a, each, each uh, area, every person has a different take on telling a story. South has a very specific one, larger than life, very robust, has lots of music going on. And they love the heroes to be larger than life, you know. So I, I really enjoyed it. I've never done a film like that. As a matter of fact, I would take my kids and see, say, please see, am I looking okay? Because, you know, I would just be clapping my hands and it was as if it's the greatest moment in the history of mankind. <laughs> you know, so it's really interesting. It's very um, uh, theatrical and it's lovely and it's very colorful. So we, we, we had lots of fun. Um, yes, language was a bit of an issue to start off with, but then uh, we started gesticulating. I would look at Atli, who's a wonderful guy. He incidentally also had a baby while you were making the film. Uh, Neil, who he named after my father, which is very sweet. Yeah, And uh, I would just look at him and go, uh, you know, in, 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 in South, when you call Sir, you say Garu. So I'd say Garu, and he'd go, Mas. And that is it. So most of the time we would just go, Garu Mas, Mas, which meant it's good. And it's all right. So we made most of the film just shaking our hands and having a great time over idli dosas and some chili chicken. <laughs> and we had some wonderful actors from the south, Mr. Vijay Setupati. Uh, 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 who else was there? This uh, uh, he, he wasn't in the film, unfortunately. Nayantaraji. Uh, we had some lovely South Indian talent in the film. And I think genuinely it's one of the first fusions of Hindi and South Indian cinema which uh, transcended all kind of boundaries and did really, really good business and was really loved as a film uh, across the whole nation. So, a great experience for me, Jawan was here. And uh, speaking about other extremely talented actors, this is maybe a question that the Italian fan base will understand a bit better, than, but you also work with Kabir Bedi, who in Italy is known as Sandokan. And he played a very ruthless villain. How was that? Yeah, it was, uh, you know, when, when the film came out and we saw Mr. Kabir Bedi, who I now know personally, that time we just saw him as handsome hunk, and he had this long hair and an Italian Sandokan was coming. It was during the time I used to uh, press my mother's feet and watch movies with her. And uh, we waited, and you, you know, you didn't have over-the-top uh, platforms and so you didn't really uh, have access. You had to wait somehow. And I remember, can we get Sandokan, Sandokan's VCR? We want to see it. And I saw it. And it was really heartening. I mean, genuinely, if you were to talk about crossover actors, if I'm not mistaken, I don't know before that. At least in my times, Kabir Bedi was the first crossover actor internationally, and uh, uh, rightly so. And uh, coincidentally, in one of my first films that I did with him, Amalniji Dilashna, he was my father. So I'm the son of Sandokan. <laughs> so, uh, it's, uh, it is really wonderful. We knew all about it in India. It was a big thing, and uh, yeah, for Mr. Kabir Bedi, I think this kind of opened doors for lots of other actors to feel they could go outside the country and act. Action and dance is a big part of your film. Uh, how? much are you involved in choreographing a dance scene or a musical number and how much effort goes into choreographing a fight scene and action scene consider that especially in your last movies there are so many elements trains helicopter fighter planes and other uh, guns and so on so is how do you work on that so yes action is difficult 
you have to practice it, you have to learn it. Yes, you have doubles doing some of the most dangerous stunts. I have some wonderful guys, a gentleman called Devil for Pathan and Jawan, and some other boys. Um, but 80% of it, you have to finally do it yourself if you want to sell it truthfully. Uh, otherwise, it doesn't look right. Um, so you get hurt, you have to choreograph it. The next film that I'm doing, King, I have to start working on it, lose some weight, stretch a little, so my groin doesn't get caught when I'm doing action. It's very painful. It's very hurtful. Uh, I have a, I have two bagfuls of icing machines, so you keep doing it. And it's just the worst uh, thing to see me on sets after action. I look really cool in the film after that I'm tied up, somebody's pressing my hand. <laughs> You can't walk, you have to go like this and then suddenly you sue people, you stand up and go <laughs> It's just really like that. But, but on a serious note, when you have dancing in a film, it does take away from character. Because you don't dance like someone, you dance like yourself. It's very difficult to dance in character. Maybe one or two films like I was playing um, uh, Rabne Banadi Jodi where I'm a bad dancer and also you play. But it's very difficult. So. For an actor like me, essentially, it was very difficult to accept it. But slowly over the years, with uh, most of the choreographers now, they're very kindly to me. They don't expect me to do lock and pop. <laughs> they don't expect me to jare too hard. <laughs> they're okay, you know, zinda, banda, or chinya, chinya. So it's a difficult thing. Even now, uh, whenever I get to know that I have to go and shoot for a song in a film, I am awake all night. It's very difficult. It's very difficult. Still speaking about your films in Ra One, uh, where you play this digital tech wizard, there's a, there are a lot of Jackie Chan jokes, references. So I want to know why is that, and did you get to meet the man, or was it just a kind of inside joke in the film because of what happens later, all the action and so on? You know, I I have to uh, say this if I was to. Uh, count my favorite, favorite actors of all time, uh, Mr. Michael J. Fox, Mr. Al Pacino, De Niro. Uh, I, I think Mr. Jackie Chan will be right up there. I love Jackie Chan. I think he's very funny. I think he's physically amazing. I think he enacts things very well. And he still continues to inspire me. And I had, uh, when my son, my first son was born, Aryan, I really felt he looked like Jackie Chan. <laughs> and, you, know, you know, when kids are born, they look little, yeah, he's like, he's, he's, he's like Jackie Chan, you know, he, he looked very Jackie Chanish to me. Uh, and then I trained him in Taekwondo, assuming he will grow up to be Jackie Chan. And I really wanted him to be Jackie Chan, I'm telling you honestly. I remember a friend of mine met him somewhere, then he signed a hat cap, cap for Mr. Um, Mr. Jackie Chan, signed it for Aryan. And then many years later, uh, I think three, four years ago, I had the privilege of meeting him in Saudi Arabia. And uh, he was as wonderful, as sweet as I'd expected him to be. And uh, so it wasn't an in-joke, it is something I, I really love Mr. Jack Chan and uh, it's been my privilege and pleasure to have met him. And uh, if he ever sees this uh, interview, he should know, he had promised he'll open a Chinese restaurant with me. <laughs> in partnership, and he hasn't done so. So, Jackie Chan, San Sai, please come. Uh, some of the more recent film, they have also a lot of digital technology. And I wanted to know how digital technology changed, uh, from your point of view, the process of a filmmaking. Well, I, I think it's very important, especially with youngsters now having telephones. You'll understand it, you know, because the newer generation is not going to be um, technologically bereft like maybe the older one is. We have to learn, we still have to figure out how to use the remote control. But the younger guys know stuff and when they know stuff, they want to see stuff. And when they want to see stuff which is larger than life, more imaginative, bigger, better, I think technology will make, it is just one line, what you can imagine, you can show. And I think that's very important. So um, there are some storytellings which require technology to us, but even fan, you know, finally after wearing all that makeup, we had to touch it up so it doesn't look unreal. You need technology for that, uh, for flying, for fighting, for all the aircrafts. Um, just to make it clear, I didn't jump from the plane. 
Question to that, yeah. You didn't? I can. Um, that day I wasn't feeling like jumping from the So, um, it all helps. Uh, but having said that, I think at the end of it all, uh, technology is going to be the backdrop, not the backbone of filmmaking. Uh, it will always be the nuances, the emotions, the thoughts, the basic simple truths of uh, human beings, which is determination, hope, uh, happiness, sadness, failure, success. I think those are the things which are going to mount a film on the back of technology. It's never going to be the backbone of great storytelling, is what my belief is. But as an assistant, uh, as an assist, as uh, helping tell bigger, better, nicer, sweeter, cooler, imaginative stories, I think technology is uh, really, really very helpful. And in the last five years, it has changed drastically. And I think next few years, even more. Among your filmography for this, to celebrate your presence in Locarno, we picked Dev Das. Uh, and it is a film that I saw many years in a festival and I loved it. And I know there are some stories about it in Dev Das. And uh, maybe you want to share them with the it, it, it's a very special film, like again, it keeps going back. This whole interview has become about my mother. Uh, it keeps going back there because when I was, again, back pressing feet, which I've done a lot, you know. Okay, so one mantra if you get for success is keep pressing your mother's feet. <laughs> so I was, I was pressing, and, and Dev Das was a movie she loved watching. My dad also used to talk about it. It's one of the biggest, greatest classic films with Mr. Dilip Kumar, and even before that with Mr. Sehgal, Lutam Kumar down in Bengal. It's been remade in the country and it's about a guy who's an alcoholic, doesn't commit to a girl, goes away and you know, at that time I could not find any essence in it at my age. Many years later when Mr. Sanjay Leela Bansali, who I think is one of the most uh, talented filmmakers of our times, uh, he came down and he said, I want you to do Dev Das. So I said, no, he's a loser, he's an alcoholic. Uh, I'm too cool to be Dev Das. And all. So it kind of petered out and then before leaving he just said one thing, which still sticks with me. And he's, uh, it's a great experience making Dev Das, Mr. Bansali. He said, uh, I'll not make this film if not with you, because uh, your eyes are like Dev Das. <laughs> so I said, okay. Yeah. He says, I will not cast anyone. And, and for a year he didn't. And then we met again and I said, okay, if you can't find eyes like mine, <laughs> okay, I'll do the film. And uh, I was uh, again privileged to work with Aishwarya Rai and Madhuri Dikshit in the same way. Jackie it was one of the most wonderful experiences of my life to play that character. I don't like to play characters which demean women, I'll be honest. I didn't want him to be uh, liked for the reason in the film that he, um, you know, sort of disses a woman and doesn't commit to her. I wanted him to come across as a person who's a bit of a spineless uh, person. It's not somebody you should look up to. Yes, the enactment might be nice. I think Bansali made the film really beautifully. You get taken in by the drama and inshallah everybody will enjoy it when they see it. And of course Madhuri Dikshit and Ashwarya Rai and Jackie Shroff. And it was really nice and beautiful dialogues. But I still don't want people to... I, I, and I don't think anybody wants to be like this. I don't think anybody says, okay, you know, I'm going to tomorrow just get drunk and fall down screaming at my dad, you know. It's enjoyable. But it's not a character that you take back home and a mother tells, you know, baby, grow up to be like they were. So I, <laughs> I'm happy it didn't happen like that. It's not a negative character. I just didn't want a character who has commitments or issues with women to become popular in a different sense. So I think I achieved that under the tutelage and guidance of Bansali. And uh, also it was really nice because uh, I wanted to do it because my mom and all loved it. So I believe in heaven if she has seen movies. Today she will see Dev Das in Lokarno. <laughs> she will be uh, very happy. And, uh, and I, I, I need to tell, I, I, I want to thank Mr. Bansali if he sees this interview because he, he takes very really long to shoot films because he's very artistic and uh, detailed. And all I did many nights was, I, I used to drink uh, for the role, otherwise I don't drink. And uh, so I would uh, have uh, alcohol there. And then one night, uh, Ma'am Madhuri Dikshit would be dancing. One night, Ma'am Ashwara Lai would be dancing. And I'd be just drinking there with Mr. Jackie Shroff. And 
at the end of the day they'd say, oh, a lot of hard work, gosh, let's see you. <laughs> so half of the film was like that. So for me, the most pleasurable experience, then releasing it at the festivals, and it's right here, you've chosen it, so it's a, it's a good choice. Thank you. Let's get closer to home. One of your heroes, you said so yourself, is our hero, Roger Federer. Mm -hmm. And you shot DELJ in Switzerland. So, what is the specific ties that you have to Switzerland? Um, see, I joke about it, but to be honest, you know, when I was growing up in Delhi, I come from a very lower middle class house. And to come to Switzerland is a dream, you know, at that time in the 80s, oh my God, we'll go to Switzerland. We just heard the name, you know, like, like we back, uh, back home in India, it's Kashmir, and everybody loves Kashmir, so internationally it was Switzerland. Oh, to be in Switzerland, you know, and then I did a film and I'm down here, and, uh, you know, I was uh, so, I'd be shot, I think, near Interlaken and Stad. And uh, we go there and we just found this greenery and snow, which I'd never seen in my life, and cows and <laughs> bells. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. It was so pretty and so beautiful. And um, unfortunately, the girls had to dance in uh, chiffon saris. I could wear the jacket. It was really cold, unlike Locarno, which is very hot. <laughs> Well, so I, I, it was really uh, fantastic. It changed my career. Uh, I did all the romantic films. I shot them here with Mr. Yash Chopra. So for me, it's a strange connection. Uh, I'm now the Swiss chocolate boy. And, uh, I, I think it's a full circle for me. Uh, so when you asked me and uh, Nazaro and the whole team has been very, very humble about and thanking me for coming here. But I want to thank you because for me, it's like a full circle. When everyone get me the honorary citizenship. Oh, yeah. citizenship. Or get me to meet Roger Federer. <laughs> we are we charging money for that after this wedding. Is that what you came for? You thought an interview would be that kind of an interview? <laughs> the very last question of this session. Hang on. You have done a lot. Okay. So when you embark on a new project as we were speaking briefly yesterday and i'm not giving anything away so what is there that still pushes you forward besides this very beautiful idea of giving joy to the people that go see your films what is it that drives you still i i think the essence is still that uh, that I really want to, uh, I think, like I said yesterday, um, you know, that cinema embodies many facets of life, and so many emotions that it's very difficult, impossible for one person to be able to express all of them in one lifetime. Um, I, I live with that hope that maybe I can keep on doing different films and, you know, cry differently, laugh differently, fall differently, dance differently. I know I'm limited as an actor. I know I don't have the scope. Uh, that other actors have, uh, more talented than me, but I just don't want to give up. I just want to keep trying till I can, you know. I think I can, uh, like my family every day asks me, that, how do you get up in the morning, wear makeup, and go do the same thing again and again for the last 35 years and not get tired. And uh, genuinely, it's something that keeps me going. Uh, it keeps me uh, happy. There is nothing that makes me happier than being on a set in a closed room with lights and not because I'm the focus of attention but because I know that I'm able to bring joy to someone very far away who I may never meet or see again. Right? And, uh, if, I, if I don't do this, I don't know if I'll be able to keep it. We, we have, uh, just, just to uh, put it out there, I think it's important that I, we have a very normal uh, family life, you know, out from outside, and I want people to know this, because, you know, outside stardom, and um, it's larger than life, people come out, thousands of people look at you, you wave off to crowds, and, you know, there's a lot of madness, it's like a rock star, and with my dashing, drop-dead gorgeous good looks, <laughs> it can seem uh, very uh, um, alien and different, but it is not. The family is very simple, the kids are very simple, like a father, I spend a lot of time with them, 
I want them to learn. I, I want them to be humble about the privileges they have because of me becoming a star. I want them to understand they have to come out of the shadow, negative and positive, of being a star son. Um, the wife is sweet, she looks after, she keeps balance, uh, there's some wisdom there, um, there is some uh, jokes there. So it's a very simple life. Uh, people who work with me, all of us here, uh, you know, we lead a very simple life. Uh, because at the core of that simplicity is, for each one of us sitting here, we've been here for three days, back home, my whole family, the core is that there is somebody in this house who's been able to find a space, can do something uh, and wants to keep on doing it, but it brings happiness to someone somewhere. Don't let that come to rest. So everybody's very encouraging to me. You know, My team is always encouraging me, go on, do it, it look very good. Um, I'm not going to dance however much they encourage me. <laughs> But uh, I think it's very important for everyone to know that stardom is a byproduct of what I do. Uh, being big, being famous, being rich is not the important part, it's an essential part. Doing well in your job, earning money, looking after your family is most important. But more important than that is whatever job you're doing, because we spend more time doing that than anything else, 8, 10, 12 hours a day, whatever our job is. If you can change and touch people's life with your job, even if you are a bank teller, if you are a script writer, you don't have to be an artist to change people's lives. Whichever job you are in, uh, you know, if you are a chauffeur, if you are a bank manager, if you are a CEO, you will be able to touch people's lives. And if you are able to do that in the, uh, you know, in a, for a minute or a moment, uh, I, I think it's a life worth having lived. And I think that's what, uh, to me, uh, makes me keep on going, uh, makes me want to keep on going back on the set every morning. I hate wearing makeup, but <laughs> I have to wear it. Uh, but you have to go do your things, you have to sweat it out, you have to enjoy yourself because somewhere it will give, uh, it will touch somebody's life. And I think that's very, very... We love you so much. We came from America all the way for you. We've been your biggest fan since we were kids. Um, our question to you is, out of all the amazing roles you've done, which one personally impacted you the most? You've done the romance, the hero, the action. Which one impacted you the most? All of it, it impacted us. But personally for you, which one? <laughs> which was your name? My name is Nabila, and this is Maroosh. My name is Maroosh. We came from Washington, D.C. for you. Yes. Thank you for coming. Thank you so much. So I, 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 don't, I don't want to break your heart with this answer. Uh, I'll, I'll be honest, Nabila, because uh, it's very important for me, and it's, it's at variance with a lot of really wonderful actors, how I think about acting. I truly believe that when I'm doing a role, whether it's a Rahul or a Raj or a Devdas or Kali or whatever, I have to not believe in the character. Uh, I know a lot of actors take this very seriously. They get disturbed when I say this. Uh, I don't believe in the character. It's not important for me to believe in the character. It's important for me to make Navila believe in the character. Uh, it is, uh, I have to make you believe. So a lot of people, when I finish a role, they say, has it changed your life? No. But this is what I do. This is my job. This is what I was trained to do. This is an iota of talent that God has given me to do. And uh, it's not changing my life. You know, it's like asking a tennis player. So that match, did it change you as a person? Of course it was very difficult. Of course it, I put in my best in it. Of course I wanted to win. But no, it's not made me a different person. You know, it's not, oh, I've come back and now I'm a different kind of person because I won that match or lost that match, you know. So I don't change. Um, I only do roles, I'll be again very honest, which I feel that I feel for. I just don't do it. I try not to make it a hero type. Uh, I try to bring in some nuances of people that I've met, uh, interacted with and try to put it into, uh, like, like actually Dal was a person I knew very well, who was, a, who was a genius in my school. And he was very awkward and shy because he had a stammer. And uh, I wanted to, you know, and he must be somewhere a very successful scientist right now, I'm sure. But he was so awkward and I wanted that awkwardness to come in the character of Dar, so I use the stammer a bit. So I use nuances from things that have affected me, but no, a character has not really impacted me and um, changed my life completely, no. Uh, unfortunately, or maybe it will later. I'm still representing America here. Oh, uh, oh, 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 
how was the iconic Shah Rukh Khan pose invented? That what led to you finding that pose? <laughs> What's your name? Raji. 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 I don't know Raji. I, uh, the other day uh, I was sitting with uh, I really don't know. I have no idea. I think uh, I think what what happened is that uh, you know in, in movies in Indian cinema one of the things that you need to know initially in 90s is what is known as a dip. Uh, a dip is you know you just do it on one leg and I don't know it just is you stand there. I, I may have forgotten it, so please don't laugh at me. But it's like for for example, uh, hum me a song. Somebody saw. Ah. And then, <laughs> and then I, I couldn't do that. Uh, and then I felt very ashamed of myself at night. And all night I kept doing this. I kept doing this in the room. Kept doing it, kept doing it. In the morning I came and the choreographer, I remember, was so. So I said, ma'am, ready? She said, ha, beta, tum, you can't do that. So you just stand there and put your hands up. So I said, but I can do that. I can do this. Song. She said, no, no, we don't need it. Don't do that. So, so she didn't do the dip. And then I just put my arms out. Then again, I went to another set. And again, it was a little difficult. And I turned to her or maybe to Farah. And I said, listen, let's cut it. Can I just put my arms out? And it kept getting arms out. And then I think uh, because I was putting my arms out so much, I had to do it more intensely. And I made it scientific. Then I start telling people that you have to keep your right leg like this. So to the people in the <laughs> so stunned. I'm sorry. Let me take a breath. So first, I would want to talk about my friend's painting. She's Italian, and oh, wow. she's is, is that a yeah. painting or a photograph? It's a painting. A painting. She painting. Awesome. In 2017, before even knowing that you know she would meet you. So oh. I would like so to talk nice. about that first. It's beautiful. Please go. Can ahead. I have a question. Thank you. Yes, I have. Cinema sorry. related. Yeah, 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 sorry, sorry. Um, um, so my question is that. It's actually yesterday that I felt that this must be a regular day for you, right? I mean, love, fans, you've done it all. Like any, I, I cannot think of a role that you may have not done. So as a person who has achieved this much success, what role excites you? Like, you know, do you feel content or is there still hunger and you feel like I want to do this kind of role? That's my Thank question. you. What's your name? My name is Aishwarya. <laughs> Thank you so much for Can you being say? here. But uh, I, I do believe that, uh, uh, I, I, again, this is a little at variance with how people talk when, uh, you know, gurus talk and they say you should be calm and you should be collected and you should meditate and accept life as it is and have peace and contentment. I think contentment uh, is overrated. I think you need to be dissatisfied. You need to always be questioning yourself. Does not mean you go and become anxious, <laughs> but you need to need to always be dissatisfied as a creative person. So I don't get satisfied ever. I don't think I've achieved anything. I don't think uh, that there is, uh, uh, you know, it's over and done with and I'm successful. I think it's all irrelevant. What is relevant is, can I do something new tomorrow again? I keep asking myself, when was the last time you did something for the first time? And I keep wanting to answer that, oh, that was just day before yesterday, or that was just now, you know. A um, lot of times, uh, I've not been asked, but I'll still answer this, that uh, many a times people say, you should do more meaningful cinema, it should stand for something, it should, I think my cinema stands for everything, for somebody. Because it should have a little bit of happiness, it should have a little bit, it should have a gamut of colors, it should have everything for someone to take away in a given audience like this. I don't want my cinema to be a statement. I want it to be a testament uh, of life in its beauty, good and bad. So sometimes it's a testament about right things, sometimes it's about corruption, sometimes it's about bad things, sometimes it's about love. But it need not just be a statement and we think it's a purpose. Uh, all these things confine you, compartmentalize you. I like to keep it open and believe that what I've done today is the first day I'm doing it. What I've done yesterday is over and done with. When my movie gets over, I take a two-hour bath. After that, I don't think about the success or the failure. I'm on to the next one. 
if I can't move on to the next one, I think I'll rust and I'll finish off. And I will say to all youngsters, please do not rest on your laurels. You will just uh, have extra fat. <laughs> I, I don't mean to. I don't mean to be speaking about it physically or body shaming anyone. I just mean in terms of emotional fat. I mean in terms of becoming obsolete. I think in terms of just rusting. So you have to keep on thinking. That is this. That especially if you're an artist or any anything else actually. Just be dissatisfied. Get up, do something new. Don't worry that you know I have been successful. I, I don't even take holidays. So it's very important to continue doing something new. So hopefully. My next year, when my film finishes, uh, we'll meet again somewhere, inshallah. And you say, oh yeah, that was me. Thank you so much, Shahid Khan. Just a second, may I ask, may I ask you something? May all cool girls and cool boys raise their hand and say, oh!